title of this course is Nutrition and Health Assessment. So obviously, we're going to be focusing on assessing individuals for their nutrition and health risks. But how do we do that? Look at these two individuals. Can you see nutrition or health risk just by looking at them? Of course not. We need to gather nutrition and health related data that provides evidence for a risk. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has developed a system to help us do that. It's called the Nutrition Care Process. The Nutrition Care Process was developed as a framework for improving the consistency and quality of nutrition care and the predictability of the nutrition care outcomes. It is not intended to be standardized nutrition care for clients using what is sometimes referred to as cookbook medicine, where everybody gets the exact same plan like you're following a set recipe. Rather, the nutrition care process is designed to establish a standardized process for providing that care. Even identifying who what might need to go through this nutrition care process is an awkward first step. So there are nutrition screening tools that are out there. Sometimes we have referrals from physicians or even self-referral. But no matter how we identify individuals who are going to start the process, a nutrition professional can use the nutrition care process to identify the nutrition problems and then the best evidence-based intervention strategies. So I'm going to do a quick overview of the four steps of the nutrition care process. Starting with step one, which is nutrition assessment. A formal description of this step is the systematic method for obtaining, verifying, interpreting data needed to identify nutrition-related problems, causes, and significance. That's a mouthful, but it's really just collecting data that we would use as evidence for identifying a problem. The type of data we typically collect is usually summarized with the acronym of ABCD. And so the type of data would be anthropometrics, so think about height, weight, head circumference, biochemical, that would be things like blood lipids, blood glucose, hematocrit, clinical, clinical is physical assessment data, which is separate from anthropometrics, and client history information. So think about family history for a risk of a disease. And then that D, the final one, is dietary, where we take a look at food and nutrition-related history. Step two is nutritional diagnosis. A nutritional diagnosis is the identification and labeling of a specific nutritional problem. Nutrition and dietetic professions, professionals use standardized nutrition diagnosis terminology, and you will be limited to using only that terminology for diagnoses in this class. These diagnoses are actually organized and described in the Electronic Nutrition Care Process and Terminology Manual. Uh, you will need access to that in this course. Students new to nutrition care process often find this is the hardest step, and I'm going to discuss it more in detail in a moment, but I want to make sure that we quickly go over all four of those steps. So I want to go through the final two steps of the nutrition care process, then come back and talk about nutritional diagnosis a bit more. The final two steps, then, are the nutrition intervention and monitoring evaluation. Nutrition intervention is defined as the selection of a nutrition strategy to resolve or improve the nutritional diagnosis. And the nutrition monitoring evaluation is used to determine and measure the amount of progress made from the nutrition intervention and whether that nutrition, any nutrition-related goals and expected outcomes are being met. Now that's a quick overview of the four steps. In this course, we do not really focus on step three and four, but they flow from steps one and two. If steps one and two are done completely and accurately, we will be able to identify the best interventions and then we'll know the criteria that we want to monitor. But let's go back to that step two, nutritional diagnosis, and talk about how we're going to go through that. As mentioned before, the nutrition diagnosis step is to identify and label a specific nutritional problem. It's important to emphasize that this nutritional diagnosis is not a medical diagnosis. The identified or diagnosed problem must be within the realm that a nutrition and dietetic professional can treat independently. For example, let's say you had a client with a high blood pressure and a diet that had too much sodium. As a nutrition professional, we can recognize hypertension from a, a blood pressure data point, but we do not treat hypertension. We can independently work with our client to reduce their sodium intake, but not their blood pressure. Given this assessment data, we might consider diagnosis of hypertension or excessive sodium intake. But remember, this is a nutritional diagnosis. An appropriate diagnosis would be excessive sodium intake, not hypertension. 
Nutritional diagnosis needs to be related to what a nutrition and dietetic professional does, not what he or she knows. So now I'm going to move to actually looking at how we're going to use the electronic nutrition care process uh, terminology reference manual to determine these nutrition diagnoses because we have very specific terminology that we need to, to use. So here is the electronic manual and you will need to have already accessed it and we're going to launch the, the publication. So I'm going to pick my language and then I'm going to click on that launch the publication and this is the overview of electronic uh, the nutrition terminology reference manual so you may want to uh, check around and look at that but right now we're going to focus in here on terminology around diagnosis so if you put a cursor over your terminology you can see we have a terminology for assessment diagnosis intervention and monitoring evaluation we'll look at that diagnosis and under diagnosis we've got four different areas we've got intake we've got clinical We've got behavioral and environmental, and then other. For right now, I'm going to click on intake. What you get here, you're now going to have these nutrition diagnostic terminologies. And for every terminology, for every diagnosis, there's going to be three things that you need to really pay attention to. One, you're going to be have a very specific title. So we've got that um, specific term that's used for that diagnosis. We also have a very specific code. So for the diagnosis of increased energy expenditure, the code would be NI 1.1. For inadequate energy intake, NI 1.2 on down the list. If you click on the title, it will take you to a page that will give you more specific, specific information about that diagnosis. One of the things it has is a definition. So for increased energy expenditure, we've got the definition of resting metabolic rate, more than predicted requirement due to body composition, medications, or endocrine, neurological, or genetic changes. The other thing you want to pay attention to is that etiology. So etiology means that the cause or the contributing factor. So would this definition fit your client? And for this um, definition, this diagnosis, it'd be a physiological cause increasing nutrient needs due to anabolism, growth, maintenance or bo of body temp temperature, or voluntary or involuntary physical activity movement. So those are the things we're going to pay attention to, to the title, to the code, and to the definition. As we use this system, there's two things that I really want you to have key concepts I want you to think about. One is you want to use that, that definition, that title, and the etiology that best defines your situation, your client's situation. The other thing is we're going to communicate this in a very standardized, clear, and effective manner. So as we go through these, those are the two things we're going to pay attention to. Getting the right code, the right diagnosis, and then communicating that effectively. To do this, I'm going to go through two scenarios where we have two clients that have energy imbalance and show how we can use this system to have different diagnoses with essentially the same situation. So we have Alice and Alex. They both are losing weight, they both are losing weight, but they don't want to. We could conclude that they are energy imbalanced. Remember, we only uh, are allowed to use those, these nutrition diagnosis terminology in the system. So there isn't that terminology of just energy imbalance. So we're going to have to be a little bit more specific. Uh, there are many different diagnoses. In fact, in energy balance, we've got increased energy expenditure, inadequate energy intake, excessive energy intake, predicted inadequate energy intake, and predicted excessive energy intake. Five different titles. So we need to kind of figure out which one fits the situation. Well, I think we're going to need a little bit more information. So let me give you a little bit more about both Alice and Alex. Alice is a 76-year-old female who recently started a medication that has impacted her appetite. She's had a five pound weight loss over the last three weeks due to consuming about 500 calories less than her estimated need for 1,700 calories. Alex, on the other hand, is a 41 year old male. He typically is weight stable, but he's recently started training for a long distance competition next month. He's also lost five pounds over the last three weeks due to consuming less than 500 calories needed than the estimated need for 3,400 calories very different situation. We can quickly realize that that, that general uh, description of unwanted weight loss due to energy imbalance is not sufficient to communicate effectively these two situations. You will need to read the definition and review the etiologies to identify the ones that best match the situation. 
For Alice, it's going to be inadequate energy innate, intake, NI 1.2. So let's take a look at why that fits. Energy intake, the definition says energy intake that is less than energy expenditure established by a reference standard and a recommendation, recommendations based on physiological needs. So we've established that. She's taking in 500 calories less than what was estimated at 1,700 calories. If we look at etiologies, there's patho, pathological, physiological, decreased ability to consume sufficient energy. That describes Alice. So that's going to be a good nutritional diagnosis for her. Let's go back and take a look at about Alex. For Alex, the best one is going to be the predicted inadequate energy intake. Let's take a look at why that one fits his situation. So the definition, future energy intake that is anticipated based on observation, experience, or scientific reason to be less than estimated energy expenditure, established reference standards, and recommendation based on physiological needs. It fits so far, we know, because he's taking in 500 calories less than we estimated he needs. And we look down at that etiology, and we can see that one of them is anticipated change in physical demand or work or leisure activity, such as a job chain or training for competitive sports. So as we identify that, that definition, that uh, nutritional diagnosis that best fits um, our situation, we need to look at the definition, we need to take a look at the etiology. Now, once you have the correct diagnosis, we now have to think about how to communicate it. Remember, we have to do two key things. We have to get the right diagnosis, and then we also need to communicate it in a clear and concise and effective way. And the nutrition care process has a specific way to do that. The nutrition care process has developed a set sentence structure for this purpose, PES statement, where the P stands for problem, the E stands for etiology, and the S stands for signs and symptoms. Here is the specific format for writing these types of symptoms. Problem related to etiology as evidenced by signs and symptoms. If we would write a PES statement for Alice, we might say inadequate energy intake, NI 1.2, related to a loss of appetite secondary to medication as evidenced by five pound uh, weight loss over the last three weeks due to consuming 500 calories less than her estimated needs of 1,700 calories. For PES statement for Alex, we would say predicted inadequate energy intake, NI 1.4, related to inability to consume sufficient energy to meet increased needs while training for competitive events uh, next month, as evidenced by five pounds of weight loss over the last three weeks due to consuming 500 calories less than an estimated need of 3,400 calories per day. We can see in this that the, the problem, the specific diagnosis is there. We included the, the, um, the code. We related to a specific etiology that's related to the individual themselves. And then we have some signs and symptoms. There's not an exact way to write a PES statement. There are wrong ways, however, and we will have criteria that we will be using to evaluate your PES statements in this course. Here are the criteria that we're going to use to evaluate your PES statements written in, in this course. You have to have the appropriate diagnosis, and when you write it out, you're going to include the title and the code. Now, in the professional environment, when you actually go and get into a work site, you would not include the code. The code that we have in this nutrition care process is specific to the field of dietetics. It is not part of the medical chart. But in this class, we're going to expect you to include that in your PES statement. The etiology, we're going to be looking at that etiology focuses on the cause. It does not just restate the diagnosis. For signs and symptoms, they need to be appropriate. They need to be focused on the diagnosis. You need to have at least two data points. Uh, and those types of data that we're looking for is going to focus on nutrition data, not physiological data. So that would be nutrition data would be food and nutrient intake. Physiological data would be blood cholesterol, um, height and weight. It's not wrong to have physiological data, but we want to make sure that you include at least one data point that is nutrition based. You need to include a reference standard. So if you're going to give a nutrition value, you're going to say this is the value that I'm using, the reference standards, to say it's either too high or too low. And then finally, we're going to avoid these vague terms like higher or lower, or more or less. If you, someone needs to have less sodium in the diet, you need to describe what value they should be having or how much they should be taking out. So avoiding those vague terms. Let's take a look at a couple of 
sample PES statements, I uh, show you a, a poor one and then a better one. So a poor example of a PES statement is excessive fat intake, NI 5.5.2, related to eating too much fat as evidenced by a BMI of 31 and consuming too many calories from fat. Now the problem, uh, we have several problems with this. The, the code is there and the definition is okay, but the etiology is just restating the diagnosis. It's not going to help us identify what's the cause of the problem. If we have a good etiology, it will clearly link to what we need to do for intervention. And if we only restate the problem, that's not going to be useful. Another problem with this is we've used inappropriate data. The diagnosis is excessive fat intake. BMI is not related to dietary fat intake. It's a data point for obesity and excessive calorie intake, but it's not related to dietary fat. If you're going to have a diagnosis of excessive fat intake, you need to give dietary fat intake. Also, too many calories from fat. That is way too vague. You need to give a value, what was the percent of calories coming from fat, and you must give a standard to give it to comparison. Here's a good example. Excessive fat intake, give the code, related to frequent consumption of fast food meals, so there we have a specific etiology, as evidenced by a diet of 37% of calories coming from fat compared to the AMDRs of 20 to 35%. So we've given you a data point related to food and we've given the reference standard. And then excessive food, protein food in, uh, group intake of less than, of greater than uh, eight ounces equivalent per day compared to the recommendation of three to four uh, ounces per day. Both of those are dietary related and they are going to be directly related to how we're going to intervene with some idea of a strategy for intervention with that. In summary, the nutrition care process is a standardized approach for providing nutritional care. Using the four defined steps, you will gather relevant data, determine an appropriate nutrition diagnosis, and then communicate it using standardized terminology along with clear evidence to support your conclusions. If these first two steps are done well, you will be ready to select the best evidence-based intervention strategies to help your clients achieve their nutrition and health-related goals.